Let it use it for my for your glory. And he's gonna do it. When they're praying, the praise when they watch assemble together shaking. Talking about an earthquake, man. They were all full with the Holy Ghost. They were full of demons and, and not and drugs or what? They were full of the Holy Ghost. For that son of boy, those out there filling with the Holy Ghost, those brothers and sisters that need a new a renewed touch of your Holy Spirit. They spoke the word of God with bonus. You see what happened when you get full of the word of power of God? You speak with bonus. Now the multitude of those who believe were one heart, one uh, soul. Neither did anyone say that any things be possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. They loved one and they helped one another. And when the great power of the apostle gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was for them all. You see what happens, man, when you preach the word, God, God gives you great grace. He gives you his grace. He gives you his resurrection power. Woo! Nor was they among them who lack. You hear that? There's no lack in God's kingdom. And Satan's kingdom is lack. That's he's a thief and a robber. The word says in John 10, the thief only comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. But I come to give abundant life. Amen. For all who are possessed of land, they have money or houses sold them and brought the possession to them at, at the, they were sold. So they sold the lands and seemed to give to the apostles the money to destroy to the people and leave. They were being blessed spiritual and materially. Let them at the apostle feed. They distributed to each more anyone that had need. You see, they did. They bought food. They bought clothing to the people. And Jesus, excuse me, and Joseph, Jose, who was a man, Barnabas, but the apostle, which is translated son of encouragement, Levi, the country of Samaria, having land, and he sold it too, brought the money, and did it at the apostle feet. You see what happened when you God blesses you, when you got well, brother, when God bless, you, bless others. When you hold him back as a greedy crit, as a believing brother and sister, God ain't going to bless you. God says, more blessed to give and to receive. When you give to others, God's going to bless you beyond your dreams. Oh my God. He wants to make a soldier out of you, not a sissy. And God's army, they're soldiers. They train spiritually to battle the powers of darkness, to battle the principality rules of dark and high places. But when you pray in church, when you're in Scientology, when you're a Buddha, when you were Hare Krishna, when you were the Korean Bible brother, you're a sissy, man. It's all deception. It's taking your mind and twisting your thoughts to a, to a horrible madness. Seeing something that's out of order, there's nothing wrong with that. Brother, that is disgusting. It's out of order, brother. When you say evil is good and good is evil, that is lying to hell. Walk to them when they say, when they, when they preach something, when God saying, God say nothing, God will surely visit you. God ain't playing with nobody. I don't want to go to this big church because they got the they got the big things, they got everything, brother. God use anybody he want, man. Anybody no wealth, anybody no prestige is by being full of the Holy Spirit, being used for his glory. I want to be spiritual, wealthy, become a billionaire, become a mighty spiritual giant, devil chasing killer. Slaughter. As, you want me to come religious? Go ahead. Out there's a thousands of churches. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Love me, love me, love me. Oh, they leave the scenes. They go to the bars. They go to the hang out spot. To the hoodie. They go to the club. They get high on drugs. They get high with the girls and dancing. You think that's going to save you as a living sacrifice? God ain't going to accept that. God said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and serving that with your reasonable service, said the Lord. When you pray with fire, God's going to visit you. Look at the sons of Abraham. They were the high priests, man. The sons of Abraham, man. They were very chosen by God, the blood, man. Two of them one day, they were all disgusted. They were playing with sin. And they did a kind of strange sacrifice before the Lord in the book of Leviticus. God told me when he smelled that, he consumed them with fire, brother. They were wiped out. When Abraham heard about it, he was scared. I don't care your father could be an apostle. Your father could be a prophet. Your father could be the greatest evangelist and teacher, brother. And you playing with sin because your father's around you. God ain't going to tell him with that. You got to develop your own salvation with free and trembling, said the Lord. You got to seek the Lord's spirit and truth. You got to develop your own relationship with the Lord. This is a walk. It's not religion. It's a walk of relationship with the Lord. Because you don't talk to your Lord. He ain't going to talk to you. God said, call upon me and I will answer you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. And I will show you great things you don't know about. Glory to God. Seven. A soldier has one thing in his mind that is to carry out the duties. You hear that? Christian is to have the same motive and the same spirit, the same concentration. Hence, we are to place Christ, please Christ, not man. <clears throat> We are to please the Lord, not man. When you are man, please the blood, and you're a Christian, you go nowhere. 
Because you want to go to a high position, brother. You want to get that pleasing to, uh, to that bishop, to that to the bi or bishop, whatever, in the big church, whatever, man. Brother, you please that, you don't know way. That is not the way, man. It's the Lord that promoted, it's not man. The word told me he put down and set up another. Promotion doesn't, doesn't come from east or west. He put down one and set up another. Who are you? How dare you say I want to be in this position in the kingdom of God? God ain't gonna tell you that God's gonna put you right back down. He's gonna put you in Potiphar's house like he told Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I'm gonna take you in the spirit, I'm gonna take you to Potiphar. He used to, the Potiphar was all around the wheel, making all these beautiful vessels and stuff. And he said, he told Jeremiah, see how I make my vessels, and I crush them again. He's gonna take you, he's gonna cross you back to the Potiphar because you're not ready yet. When you go beyond God, how dare you? You're gonna be on the boundaries, and God's gonna take you, put you right back where you belong. Because you're not what the heck you're doing. You playing with divine things and the spirit, and the devil knows that that's the only thing called destroy, oh man. What I'm talking about for our weapons are warfare. I'm not kind of but I'm mighty through God pulling down the strongholds, casting down all high imagination, and so against the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. My God, the same concentration, and we are to please Christ, not man. Let's go to the prophet Micah. Micah, excuse me, Micah, minor prophet. Micah, Prof, my, minor prophets. Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. Micah chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. Look what it says here, the, the prophet of God, the man of God. The holy man of God. What he says, Micah chapter 6, verse 6, 6, 6 7, 7, 8. What should I, look what he says, why should I come before the Lord? Why should I come before the Lord and bow my soul before the highest God? Should I come before him with a burning offering? Or with a calf a year, year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? 10,000 uh, 10, rivers of oil? Should I give my first one to my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? Look what he's saying, dude. I should come with all these sacrifices to the Lord. When you send me, he will not accept you. Because he's tired of sacrificing. He made smell so much blood in the Old Testament by the thousands and thousands daily that had been killed in the tabernacle and the bronze on the top of Jesus Christ when he died that cloth just for me and you. He is the last lamp of just said, Behold, the lamp of God will take the sins of the world. Hey, he has shown you, O oh man, O oh woman, what is good. Look what he's saying. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice? To love mercy and to walk humble with you, God. When you do this, my brother, you want to have the victory, my sister, my brother. When you walk with justice, you do just before the God, before things, man. Instead of being crooked, you're going to have the victory. When you walk in mercy, He's going to be merciful to you and your family. When you walk humble with the Lord, He's going to exalt you for His glory. Because He wants to do it right. He wants to do this is through His way. It's not through sacrifice. I'll give him, I'll give a ten thousand dollar offering. I'll give a twenty million, million thousand dollar offering to this this over there. God want that. He wants your obedience. He wants obedience. He don't want sacrifice. I hear on my voice. Wow. When you're disobedient, you're giving this to the Lord, he's not gonna accept that. Because you battle for order, you playing with sin, and God ain't gonna receive nothing you give him. When he told Abraham, Abraham, give me your only son, Isaac. Take him to the mountain. But Lord, it's my only son in my old age. And he went to the mountain at Moriah. And he took his son out to punish that thin type of Jesus Christ. As it was a type of Jesus Christ. And he went to plunge down there that, 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 that night. And he stopped him. Now I know you feel more than me, Abraham, than anything else. In other words, he didn't want no Isaac inside the heart. When you put your family before the Lord, God will not accept you. When you put things that are dear to you, God, he got to be number one first in your heart. Then your family. If your father is not in your heart, it's something else. He will not accept you. No ISIS. He told my brother in your heart. He don't want no ISIS inside your heart, said the Lord. Take him out your heart quickly. Rebuke the devil because he's lying. Dismiss that fear. Say no to this habit. More to this pleasure thing. Whatever's inside my closet, take it out. Throw it out the window. Let the word of God go inside our closet. Let the Holy Spirit go inside your closet. Let the anointing of God in His presence go there. Oh my God, the devil wants to lie to you. What I'm telling my message, he wants to make discipline to, be, to discipline you to become a spiritual warrior. 
and warfare. When you war discipline, you become one of his warriors. He did it with all his servants right here. He did it with a Joshua. And he told Joshua, before you enter the promised land, Joshua, you're going to battle 33 kings, and I'm going to give you a command in Joshua to keep. Joshua 1, and he told him, Joshua, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but you should meditate day and night to observe according to all that's written therein, for they not make that way prosper, you hear that? And have good success. Mm -hmm. Success doesn't start nowhere, it starts in the word of God. He wants to count. He wants to take your inner man, your real person, and take out the dances, the junk, the roaches, the madness, and put his stuff. The beloved says in the epistle of John, the beloved wrote the book of John, the three epistles, the book of religion, he said, he told like this, second John 1, one, two, he said it, beloved, I wish of all things you prosper and be in health. You hear that? As your soul prosper. He wants to prosper you spiritually, in other words, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially. To be a blessing to the dying herd out there. Are you willing to become a disciplined spiritual warrior and warfare? That's my worst question to you, my dear friend and sister. This is a heavy message I'm preaching, man. He wants to make something out of you awesome. Are you, allowed, are you willing to let him take you and purify you, mold you, and shape you to that, to that beautiful thing he wants to make out of you? And the house of God's. It's, it's vessels of honor and dishonor. You have a choice. I got a choice. To conclude this, let's go to our Nehemiah. The great man of God, Governor Nehemiah. When they entered Jerusalem, Jerusalem was all destroyed. It was bad, and he came out of there with the king's permission, with Ezariah. And, as, and Nehemiah, he left, he came out of there with the material, with the resources. And there still was enemy all around them. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah. He had to build the walls of Jerusalem. We got to build the walls of Jerusalem in our spiritual life. <coughs> we got to build our lives, our families. But God wants to make a spiritual war to warfare. This man was a mighty warrior. Look what it says Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 13 to 21. Verse 13 to 21. Look what it says here. Therefore, I positioned man behind the lower part of the wall. As an opening, I set the people recording to the families and the sword and the spears and the bow. In other words, he gave him weapons to the families because they're about to build the new Jerusalem, beautiful city of God. But they had warfare. 14. Look and arose and said to the nobles and to the leaders and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Great and awesome, he fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters and your wives and your house. He'll fight for us. The battle is the law. It happened when our enemies heard. Yeah, they was going to hear. He's going to come around. It was known to us that God has brought their pride to nothing. God will bring the devil's work to nothing. That all of us return to the war, everyone to his work. Back to work in the God's kingdom. So it was... From that time on, the half of my servants work in construction, while the other half held the spears and shields and bars were in the armor, and the leaders were behind the house of Judah. So they were constructing, half was constructing God's house, and the half was watching. We were like this behind each other's back. That's what we got to do in God's kingdom. My God, my God, my God, my God. 17. Those who built on the wall, those who were carrying burdens, loads themselves so that one hand and to the work of construction, with the other hand with a weapon. Yeah, we help with a weapon. I would go back again for him on the word weapon, for our weapons of a warfare, not kind of by mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds. For every one of the builders has swords, God on the side of he built. So they were constructing God's purpose, but they're having walls on, they're having weapons. One had the son of a trumpet what was besides me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers and the rest of the people, the work is great. And stands that we are spread far from the one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the son of the trumpet rely to us, then our God will fight for us. Woo! Our God will fight for us. Our God will fight for us. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> so we labor in the work. Half of the demand held the spears from the they break into the star appear. They constructed God's wall. 
They constructed God's work. God wants to construct His works through you. But you got to put on the arm of God. You got to be violent. Say, yes, Lord, I'm not a sissy. I want to be bold as a lion. I want to confront the devil, what he's done to the people, what he's done to the neighbor, what he's done to the community. He wants you to construct the gospel, give the gospel to construct, to become man, woman of God. Not become junkie, homosexual, and lesbians, and prostitutes. Are you willing to become a mighty warrior, a mighty woman of God, mighty man of God? God wants to deliver you. He did it through Nehemiah. They came out of captivity. Now they're about to construct, but with the weapons of warfare. You still in bondage on the sound of my voice, and he wants to deliver you. He wants to take on the same like a madness and put you in his kingdom so you can start building that ministry, building your family for God's purpose and plans. I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to make a quick prayer. I hear my voice. I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you, Father God, in your Son's name. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with the blood of your Son. Write my name in the book of life, Father. I accept your Son as personal Savior. Take me in. I accept you. Make me a spiritual warrior out of me, Lord. So I can battle the powers of darkness and send your souls out there. For those are white who save souls, Father. I thank you for your son, Jesus, Father. I call it that, Jesus Christ, your son. Now the sound of my voice, if he said this, God is a big party out there by the blaze of heaven and celebrating because you came to God's kingdom. Welcome to God's family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My number, I'm going to give you my number. Praise the Lord. My number is here. 347, if you want to call me, I could counsel you. You call me and I'll talk to you one on one. 347 948 1865. I repeat, my number is my cell phone is 347 948 1865. My honey's number is 347 347 948 1846. I repeat, 347 948 1846. We located 1435 Olden Avenue, apartment 08, and a basement in Bronx, New York, zip code 10452. God wants to talk to you. If you got a word, encourage me, you need a word to